Hi friends, it's Lorian from Knitting Posse. I've been saying for a while that I would give you a video about my Noctuity sweater and it's finally done. It's finally off the blocking wires and I wanted to share a bit with you because I think it merits a deeper dive than what I would do on our group podcast. Uh, just in the essence of time. And I know some of you are gonna have no interest um, and some of you are probably really curious, even if it's not a project you would ever consider knitting. So a little bit of the backstory, I uh, started seeing this project pop up in my feed, this sweater, uh, when people were test knitting it. And it is a project designed by Katherine Clark, who is a knitwear designer and the owner of Brooklyn General Store. This is their logo. And Catherine also designed the e-shell and a few other designs, which you may have heard of. And I just was captivated. This was completely off my plans for the winter. I wanted to do only comfort knits, things that were sort of time tested or widely knit, things that were just soft, simple, and this is not simple. Um, I, I haven't looked at where it's been scored in the Ravelry as far as the degree of difficulty. It combines a lot of different techniques. It is not a beginner pattern, but the techniques individually are not as difficult, but because so many of them are all in one garment, to me, it's a little, it's, pro, it's at least an intermediate sweater. It just requires some stamina. Um, so the yarns that I used, I ended up buying a kit. I did some research. The kits were being released. I do subscribe to Brooklyn General's email newsletter and kits were being released. And I did some research to see, hey, can I get something similar for a little lower price? And I decided I really wanted to honor the pattern and support Catherine. So one of the things that, one of the yarns that it uses, the main color is Skydance. And it is grown on small farms in New York and spun and hand dyed in New York. The color, it's Cormo, oh gosh, Romney and Merino blended. And I believe the base is called Ursa Minor. And I believe the color is called something like kitchen, steamy kitchen window or sink, something like that. This is proprietary to Brooklyn General. Um, Catherine herself oversees, I think putting this yarn together and it does come in other colors, but it's a heavy fingering weight yarn. So that's the main color. And then it also used two colors of Chuku wool fingering. <clears throat> Which was new to me. I'd heard of it certainly, uh, but I had not used it. And there are parts of the sweater to enhance the way that these moths, these are moths, uh, come out the lower part of the moss use the darker color. Most of the sweater uses the lighter color. Um, you could certainly make the sweater with just one of them. It would come out just as beautiful. And uh, it also uses one skein or less of, I knit the size three, of Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. And one thing that was really super, this is what I have left, um, because I manipulated the colors. I just, you can see what's left is a lot of green. I didn't want green. I didn't see green in this particular sweater. I used some of the blue green up here, um, but mostly I used the orange, yellow, peachy red colors. Uh, this colorway is called Noctua Day, and I believe the sweater was actually named after the color. Catherine has done a few interviews, certainly ones um, you can check out as well. I think this I have used Spin Speckle a few times and it is a pricier yarn. Um, and I have, I, I've only used it, I've used it less often, um, but I have used it a few times. And I would say this was probably one of the patterns that made it the most, um, the most of what it has to offer. So, um, so I was glad to, to spend the money and, and get the kit. And I wanted to honor as much of what Catherine did in the design as possible. So I'm going to show you the full body. So it does have, it's about a tunic length for me. Again, I knit the size three and it does get a little wider here. It has ribbing on the sleeves, ribbing at the bottom, ribbing at the neck. 
uh, and it has sections of three color color work and two color color work. And the motifs somewhat repeat themselves. The back has, I'm gonna show you my best part, <laughs> um, but it has a secret message that is duplicate stitched into the hem. So um, one more thing I wanna point out is the pattern itself is very, very intelligently designed. So you can see the distance between the moths here and then you can see there's space here. And Catherine specifically designed this with a lot of intention and thought because you needed it to fit a certain way, but the motif needed to fit in as well. Um, so there are, as I said, a lot of different techniques. Um, you're doing stranded color work, sometimes two color, sometimes three color. You're doing it flat and in the round. I will say doing it flat is probably one of my least favorite techniques to do. Um, but this is pretty neat too. In the back of the neck, this spot where you're doing your short rows, um, you do color work. And usually that is kind of a waste of space. It has a purpose, but it doesn't often include the color work. And here she incorporated that. I have done three color or multicolor color work before. Uh, and I have my own ways of, of using. I do my stranded yarn and I work on work with both hands. I am typically a continental knitter, and so that is my, my left is my dominant hand, and I will try to hold the colors that need to show up most effectively in that hand. Um, there was a point, and I put it in my uh, Instagram feed, that I didn't like in this particular moth, I wasn't seeing the main color. And so I ended up holding more often, when I was knitting three colors, I was holding the darkest color in my non-dominant hand and the spin cycle and the cream color in my dominant or left hand. Um, I had to go back a few rows because I just wasn't liking how my dominance was working out. And this was not a sweater where I wanted to do anything um, that I wasn't falling in love with. So um, for me, three color color work or multicolor is not as difficult. Yes, you have to manage your balls of yarn. It's, yeah, that gets a little tricky, but catching floats is the hardest thing and knowing where to put your floats can be challenging and what you're catching them with. So, um, and I think that for me, the hardest part of doing the flat color work was figuring out where to catch my floats because I needed to bring my yarn to where I would need it on the next row. Um, I mentioned you do duplicate stitch. I learned that this winter. And so that just took some time. Uh, it was, once you, I actually find Knit Picks has a really great tutorial on duplicate stitch. That's what I used to learn, it was really helpful and I referred back to it for this project. Um, otherwise, you're doing your typical knit and purl. You do have to pick up stitches. You need to understand blocking, wet blocking. And I will say different, different people's projects came out differently as far as blocking, even if they use some of the same yarns. So I knit, I think that has to do with the fact that it's, it's for the most part a three color fabric. And I knit mine with floats at most maybe five stitches apart, usually three or four. And I keep uh, separating or actually pulling down on my yarn as I knit it. So you're supposed to sort of separate or loosen the stitches once you've knit them. And I did that quite a lot. And so my sweater had a lot of give when it came time to block, which was great. I needed that. Um, you also need to be able to read charts. And there's a section, as I showed you in the body, where you do have to read more than one chart. So there's, you, you very easily can use your stitch markers. I don't always use stitch markers per motif, but I did in this pattern. I thought it helped tremendously. Um, the other thing that I really found about this was that I made, it, it built community for me because there was, this is, as, as one of my new friends. So I made friends with Mary Beth, who is MB Shattuck. She's out of Alabama with Lisa of the Stop, Drop and Knit podcast. I had sort of found her podcast around the same time she was starting working on this test knit. And uh, so we've been chatting. And also Susie, who is Fiber MacGyver and she's from Minnesota. And I think this sweater, as Lisa put it, really brought brings people together because as Mary Beth said, it's an opus. This is an epic project. Uh, I I think I sort of jokingly, but I'm, if there's going to be a rhyme back, I want to meet up. I'm going to wear this. You could look for me. I will most definitely be wearing this sweater. May even host a, a meetup of people 
who go to Rhinebeck wearing this sweater because it's just it's just a really special uh, piece of work. Um, it is top down, knit top down in the round. The sleeves go on hold. I will say I really wanted to honor Catherine's uh, design as much as possible, um, but the sleeves threw me a bit. I was just having trouble. I actually blocked my sweater midway. So I blocked it, which I don't usually do. I blocked it, I finished the body and I blocked it while the sleeves were still on hold. I really wanted to see, it does have a slightly longer um, yoke, but I would not call it a swan show. I will be able to wear a, sweat, a, a jacket just fine. But the sleeves basically come to about here. And then, I mean, yeah, the sleeves, but when you put them on hold and then you pick up and you knit each of them individually. Now you could knit it in the round, but your color works really only on one side. And I did modify the pattern. I think that'll be, that's in my Ravelry project page. Uh, most of this is here. I just added a motif and I also reduced the sleeves much to the cuff, much smaller. I like a fitted cuff and this, the, the samples, the test knits that I was seeing had a much wider cuff. And I wanted a more fitted version. So I just decreased further um, and I decreased quite a bit. So it's a little bit, it's, it has a bigger decrease right before the cuff to a number that, that I was good with. Uh, and I added this bottom motif here just so I could continue the color work a little bit further. Um, I, I love this sweater. Uh, I will say for me blocking, when I blocked the body, a couple of things. When I blocked the body, I could see that it was growing quite a lot in length. It would grow in width, so I was able to get what I needed. I think I must have taken it off my blocking wires before it was fully done, because as it dried further, it got smaller again. So that was one thing. Because it has a rolled hem and I blocked it once the hem was finished, I had a really hard time um, lining up the fold and stitching it. You can see here, I did not do a stitch for stitch, whip stitch. I did a couple of stitches. To me, that was the last part of the project. I was kind of getting close to done. I had spent a, couple, a day or two knitting the duplicate stitch and I felt it was fine. One thing that happened though was the, because that's just garter, it was much looser. And so whip stitching it, I actually needed to put some folds in at the sides in order to get the fabric to um, to line up. I considered cutting it or sticking and putting a little seam in it, but this was really the simplest way for me to do it. And it's the inside of the sweater. You're really not showing off your secret message. Although I will say this message says always seek the light. And to me, that was just very, uh, that spoke to me this difficult year. Um, and so I, I, I wanted to do as much of this sweater and honor it and, and embrace it as possible. So I'm glad to try to answer any questions. If you have them, you can put them in the comments below. Um, it will make a short appearance. The, it, today is March 18th and uh, the Knitting Posse is planning our next episode probably for next week. Um, it will definitely make a short appearance, but much shorter than this video. So um, there's probably a lot more that I could say. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions in the comments or shoot me a DM through Instagram. Um, if you're working your way through it, I am here cheering you on. Uh, it is really worthwhile and a lot of fun. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Hi everyone. I wanted to show you how I go about knitting when I have three different strands of yarn. So I'm a continental knitter and that means I hold my hand, my yarn in my dominant hand is my left. I'm a continental knitter who throws, which is a little bit defeats the purpose of being a continental knitter, but it's just the system I've worked out. I end up throwing with both hands and I'm keeping the yarn, this dark yarn. I don't want to be dominant in my color management, um, in my yarn dominance management with this project. I tried that and that was really not a good Plan. So I'm using my cream colored strand and my color changing strand most often in my dominant hand and I alternate, alternate picking which color I need. So I'm going to just knit a few stitches for you so that you can see. So it doesn't matter if I go under or over, I just pick one up and I'm following my pattern. I'm working on my Noctua Day sweater. 
And in these cases, the stitches are all fairly close and fairly varied. So I don't need to wrap them, but I'm going to show you here. I need to wrap my white stitch, my white yarn, because it's going to be a few stitches until I knit it again. So I wrap it around, I wrap the yarn I'm knitting the stitch on, and then I unwrap the white and I'm good to go. And then actually gets sealed. So it gets tacked and then it gets sealed the second time you knit that yarn. So we'll just finish. I want to get to, this is works, for me, this works really well until I get to a stretch where I need to carry two yarns behind and I have longer floats. Let's see. Okay, now I'm at a point where if you see this part of my project, I'm carrying most of the, the field, the background is the cream color, and I have to carry the colored yarn, the color changing yarn behind, as well as the black gets peppered in bit by bit. So what I end up doing, because I can't, I don't have a system to catch one of these yarns in the other to carry it as a float. So I'm switching the yarn I'm gonna carry into my left hand and then I start picking from there instead. So, and I do about four or five stitches for my floats. So here I'm gonna wrap the pink one or this pink and yellow and unwrap it. I need four white and then I actually need to knit one of the black. So I'm just gonna grab the black yarn and knit that. A Couple more stitches and I'm gonna grab actually, and I'm going to, I'm a little bit off on my pattern actually, but I'm gonna show you. So then I'm gonna grab the pink one more time just to show you how I go about wrapping. So I'm gonna wrap the yarn I'm, I'm uh, catching, the, then the yarn I'm knitting, then unwrap the yarn I'm catching. And it gets caught on the back side right there. I hope you find this helpful.